I thought I'd take a different approach and just ask the clerk if she could work on uh, shortening them up. And that's all I have. Unless anyone has other changes. I'd like to make a comment. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, I had on page four there was another typo uh, under uh, departure dates, fourth line down. So they had to use Congress and should have been senators. Yeah. I and mean, we just tackled. Uh, I know I was at a video yeah. training class this past week. I think Mike was there also. And we talked about minutes and asked a lot of the other county. Uh, representatives that were all the class, probably 50, 60, and they were amazed that when we said our minutes were, could be 50 or 60 pages long, and most of them said theirs was two pages, and uh, took two minutes to, to review them, and all it was was the motion made, passed, who did it, and all the discussion. So you can always go to the videotape if you want to hear the discussion. So I think we need to shorten them down to just very pertinent information that we, that we have to put out. Any other uh, discussions or uh, changes that we see that we need to make? All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes with the changes that were mentioned. Motion to approve with recommended changes. Second. We have a motion by Zach, seconded by Will to uh, Approve the minutes of uh, February 5th with the uh, changes that were mentioned. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. All right, we have one uh, against. All right, next, uh, so motion passes. We'll move on to communications from the judge executive. Uh, we've got the uh, budget preparations is going to begin. Uh, as a, I guess, work on my second budget for administration. And we've made some big moves in the last year on different things. But I want to tell all the uh, department heads and so forth that uh, you need to be getting uh, your uh, figures in order as to what you may or may not need uh, in your departments. I know, I uh, think the jailers is the next budget that's due. Uh, but then, uh, but, but all department heads, by all means, uh, put, put some time into it and call our office and we'll discuss uh, anything y'all would like to discuss. So that's basically, I think I've got a cover sheet to that on page 42, but I'll just be able to skip over that on page 42. Right, that, that's where we're at, actually. On page 43, there's a nice picture. And uh, I'll comment on that. The bluegrass fiber, we worked on... Uh, Get, getting the internet to the community uh, over the last 14 months. And uh, this company has been courting us pretty heavy about getting something started. And, and we agreed to let them put a, uh, a device up on a big tower at a road department. And uh, they had a, this is a pavilion going down to the Possum Ridge boat dock. Going down the hill, you can actually see the lake from this pavilion. The way a crow flies, it's several miles from the road department. And they had a TV up, and we was watching live golf, and uh, the top number was pushing 300, but it ended, it landed in the 260, 70. I know what uh, Dan was there, and Zach was there, Jim was there. Uh, but so y'all correct if I got any of these numbers, I'm trying to do them by memory. And then the bottom number was still yet very strong also. 150, 180, I think, was pushing 200. And this was when the, the receiver was in a bucket truck. Well, they had another receiver just sitting on the ground by the pole. Or, and, uh, and even it was, was two-thirds that high. And it was just pointing to the trees at the ground. And uh, I have talked, they, they've hooked up, at this day they had hooked up only three people. And they have hooked up some folks after that. I think the closer we get to Mount Eden, it's running into some, I'm not going to say it's running into issues, but there's more challenges the further away you get from the road barn. Uh, now, it might be able to, to you add equipment to, to, to continue to, to get it at its at the strength they want it to be <coughs> at, but it is an option, and um, we, we kind of, we challenge this company to 
show show us it'll work, and then then we'll consider making investments. And I told the company, the people there, Bluegrass Fiber, I said, when you get a hundred people hooked up to this, then come see us, and we'll make some more discussions. So that way, I, I think that's a pretty good number, a pretty good goal to shoot for. So, just want to let the community know, if you live in and around Little Mount, you should be able to hook up and get real strong internet. And it's between sixty-four and one hundred and four dollars. There's three packages a month, and that includes all your equipment and all. And you'll have super duper high, fast internet. And uh, so, but uh, ask everyone to reach out to Bluegrass Fiber if you're in that area. Hopefully, it'll prove successful, and then we'll move it to other. Uh, we'll try to work something out and move it to other places in the county. So, uh, Chris uh, brought me some bids. Uh, we, we talked about getting those bids on those uh, tornado sirens to change them to electric from battery. And he brought a bid in. It was $38,971. I don't have that in front of all of us to look at. We may do some more research. Uh, I hope everybody's fine that I don't have that for us to vote on, but I wanted to pitch it out to you. That was through that. Through the yeah. yeah. It's uh Purchasing the equipment from Federal Signal, who is the manufacturer of the equipment, and then a Louisville Metro would send that, get people out and do the installation and climb the poles or use the bucket truck. That's the equipment it's and the labor? And the labor. Equipment and the labor. Yeah. Yeah. Equipment like 22000 or something? Yeah. Is just, that right? Some ballpark? Ballpark. How, how, many, how many sirens are you talking about? Six. 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 So about eighteen thousand give or take a There's a shop forty thousand to do everything. Uh, I'm not sure with the like KU and uh, and uh, Salt River if there's gonna be a charge to I, I don't I don't know on that part, so yeah. Yeah, It'll be depending on the dollar to that number. Yeah, <laughs> we'll the little metro people will do all the work, and I don't know if it's going to be Will they all be hooked up to electric? What? I'll be hooked up to electric. Yes, when, when do they say it will be on the time frame where they get started on that? Uh, I haven't even asked that. We just got the, got the, got the, got the prices back. We have that right to start. It was Thursday or so of last week. Yeah. And the, the numbers for the actual Rectifier the comment came from federal fairly quick that Bill and Lowell were getting the, the number on what it cost installed was going off the metro company. So it should go longer. Could you put a plan together on where you want to put these seats? What? No, that's, that's, that's retro things. That's real retro we have, we have nine sirens yeah. in the county. Uh, three, the, the newest three were put in by the city of Taylorsville on a grant some years back. And they when they did that grant, they purchased everything with them. So there, those three, the one at Fault Works, the one on the hill above us here, and the one at the middle school, all have rectifiers attached to it. The rectifier is the part that ties into the electrical grid. So that those have a rectifier on those. So they'll run constant until the power goes out, and then they switch the battery back up. The six that the county originally put up, which is spread throughout the county, are just on battery power. So they only run three, three minutes. Well, did we discuss about doing those? We do electrical. Yes, yeah. yeah. that's this. That's it. That's that's it. it. We discussed. They discussed bringing back yeah. prices. So, so the price yeah. Back, so. yeah. To add electric to the six would be thirty-eight thousand. I thought you were talking about new ones. So. Okay, that's yeah, not. Uh, <clears throat> but that would, if if we decide to spend thirty-eight thousand and change, uh, then all nine would have electric and battery. <coughs> Yeah. Well, I also I we're looking at the following Louisville Metro is a, a, a contractor in the electrical world can hook a rectifier up to a siren. And and I'm not sure, clear Chris, I'm not sure if you're sure about is there regulations as to who has to hook them up or not. I, I so but well, we can check into that, that's why I didn't have it on the agenda. I, I, know, I know in the past when trying to find people to service the site. Yeah. That is a nightmare. That's why we're full of the metro now. Well, servicing and hooking them up to their yeah, ball game. For, for sure. So I'm not sure how, I'm, I'm just not smart enough on 
what makes the sirens work and to okay. what they got to do with sirens. But my, my plan is to get more details, and then I know Brittany and, and us discussed about uh, possibly getting uh, grant money to help with this. So we're just going to look at some more avenues. Well, I just don't want to die when they're going to spring and spring season. Yeah. Of course, on the good side, they all are hooked up with the batteries. Well, they all are working, but I mean, it's the same numbers. We know it's not the best option, so yeah. I'd like to, I think we ought to you know, make it a priority that we're going to try to get something going with. So. All right. I agree. All right. I agree with you. We'll, put, we'll, we'll get on. So, uh, all right. Anything else on the, any of the comments I mentioned? Uh, next is a communication from citizens. If anyone in the audience would like to address the court, and now is the time. If you would, then state your name. And we'll drop some right. Mr. Jones, sir. Oh. Yeah, don't forget. Oh, you got enough to go oh, on? Yeah, Dan's got me. He's already out there. Okay. Dan's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> got there. Turn a picture. Sorry. Some of the going to have to tell the printer. Uh, my name is Matthew Holbrook, lived here in Spencer County for 10 years. This is obviously in regards to the Heritage Hills, things you all discussed at the last meeting. Uh, I came to the court, just so you guys know, on October 7, 2019. It'll be in the minutes. I brought a whole dissertation at that, that meeting, so I won't uh, re summarize that. But, but basically, uh, my understanding is there's two bonds in place for this neighborhood. And the picture you're looking at there, the first one shows the drop off you all discussed last time. Again, it's hard to see in the picture in black and white. I'll have to meet any one of you guys out there want to discuss it. The second picture you're going to see is me standing at the end of the road and my razor I parked down there to show you where the road was supposed to end and it obviously stopped short. That's a lengthy story I'll be happy to talk to you offline about. And the third one is the street signs as they are now. People trying to find your house can't, can't obviously see what's on the street sign. So there's some issues there. I have school aged children that go to Spencer County Elementary. They have to catch the bus about two to three hundred yards away from my house because the buses obviously won't come down our street because it's not county adopted yet. We had obviously when it snows, our snow don't get cleared off, our roads don't get cleared off, and then get trash service for two weeks. Uh, they obviously couldn't get out some of the days. My wife couldn't get to work a couple of the days because there's, there's, she don't have an all-wheel drive car. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say is, is phase one that was not mentioned last time is missing the top coat. And I know they've met with some of the, our, our other uh, fellow neighbors and talked about that with the road supervisor, and it was discussed it was supposed to be done soon, but that, that top coat, if it doesn't get done soon, bottom coat's going to be sold deteriorated that's going to cost yourself more money. My understanding again there's possibly two bonds out there for both of them. So my opinion is to come on the county in accordance with KRS 100.281 section 4 to ensure that work is done properly. That's my main concern obviously. I'm selfishly looking at that, that picture of my driveway and whether the, the pavement drops short of my driveway is a bigger issue for me personally because of obviously my kids trying to catch the bus since you go to a cul sac so the bus can come down and turn around. Uh, further the terms of design standards are set forth and adopted by this court in the subdivision regulations, Article 4, Sections 400, 403, 407, 411, I've got three minutes, I'm going quick, uh, would lay all of this out. This is the regulation that you guys set years ago, obviously been there for a long time, that, that state, well, how, road, how wide the road needs to be, what it needs to look like, these in this little cul-de-sac, and all those good things. Again, I know last meeting, this topic was discovered, but it was quickly passed over because you guys are getting toward the end of the meeting, you're ready to go home. I can tell you I've watched it live at work and I was dying to get off of it myself, so I understand how quickly I want to get done. But I hope that that doesn't make this become a bottom, a bottom issue. I hope that you guys take this serious. Obviously, I've been in this neighborhood for 10 years myself. I know some other neighbors are also here with me in support. So, uh, but anyway, the developer has known me lots for probably like two or three years. So there's no development going on. I don't know how long they're going to continue renewing a bond. I know that the county attorney is looking into it, but at some point you got to call the blood and get them out of the way. So I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else in the audience like to speak? Hello. Eric Goodwin. I'm also a resident of Eric Hill Subdivision here, kind of for the same issue, but maybe not totally related. Uh, the first portion of the subdivision road, we can trace the portion I live on. That that road has been finished and adopted by the county, somewhat. I guess we do get uh, we do get snow service, snow removal service back in the county on our road. Uh, but none of the road signs have been replaced. And I talked to uh, Mr. Moody, the uh, magistrate in place before uh, Mr. Travis here took over, and he met out there with the. Or I'm sorry, Mr. Ferris took over. Uh, uh, but he met with the road foreman out there, and uh, my comment to him was, 
the base coat's been put down when that subdivision was established in 2006, I believe, 2008. So, uh, you know, we're coming up on a uh, pretty, long, pretty long anniversary for that road. It was in decent shape. It's starting to pit. It's starting to crash. It's got grass growing through it. If it's paved and consumed the right way, you got a 20-year road, 25-year road. If it's allowed to deteriorate in its current condition, then the base coat's going to have to be redone, and it's going to cost the county more money. Um, I know the base coat was put on the other road more recently, um, but you know, it's, I believe it's just time for the county to move on this because I think it's going to cost the county more money in the long run if we don't get this road fixed the right way um, pretty soon. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, most of you know me, Martin Hughes, um, Matthew's neighbor, also in Heritage Hills. Heritage Hills. Don't want to have to reiterate a lot of things that they said, other than my, my, my primary concern is getting our part of the road, Heritage Way, and those parts that haven't been adopted in the county brought into the county. Um, like you said, we've got bus issues, we've got stuff where you know roads aren't plowed, and then also not getting garbage picked up and stuff, things that we're paying for, services that we're expecting to be provided to us for, you know, as constituents of the county. So, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else in to talk about something else? <laughs> all right, thank you all. Uh, we do have it on the agenda a little later to discuss, and I'll just uh, instead of address it now, we'll, we'll address, address it then. Uh, committees uh, or communications, uh, any other member like to speak about any particular thing? Or? Parked a lot of water for Parkland's good. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I think I've got that all cleaned up. All right. Uh, Julie, for zoning. All right. We have. Uh, I like that. Some book readings tonight. So let's start off with the application of Andrew Goodland requesting Ag1 Agricultural, the Ag2 Agricultural on 5.4 plus or minus acres located at 1751 Van Road. Commissioner Travis made a motion to recommend a rezone the application of Andrew Goodlett, requesting his own change from Ag1 Agricultural to Ag2 Agricultural on 5.4 plus or minus acres located at 1751 Van Buren Road. The recommended land use map in the comprehensive plan recommends low density <coughs> residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan, and there was no one there to speak against it. That motion was seconded by Commissioner Knoll. After a roll call vote, motion carried. Next, I have the application of Matthew Banks, requesting R1 residential to Ag1 Agricultural on 5.95 plus or minus acres located at 1326 Town Hill Road. Commissioner Fowle made a motion to recommend a rezoning application of Matthew Banks, requesting zone change on 5.95 plus or minus acres from R1 residential to Ag1 Agricultural located at 1326 Town Hill Road. The recommended land use map in the comprehensive plan recommends high density residential and there was no one there to speak against it. Commissioner Deepin seconded that motion. After a roll call vote, the motion carried on that one. Are they combining this with another piece of land? Or? They are. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't ever see that on here, and I'm like, why are we yeah. doing that one on five acres, and I assume? It, it was a smaller house truck. I can't even try to give you all the plat maps and things again. Oh, um, uh, yeah. But it was just that. a small house track, and then there's a area along Bluefield Road, or not Bluefield Road, Town Hill Road, that was already zoned residential like a thousand foot back off the road. Yeah. And so that's what we're changing um, to agricultural to be in with the balance of this farmland. Yeah, I see it now. So I just looked at the picture, Billy. Okay. <laughs> it happens. And next we have is the application of Emmanuel Channing Estate. Estate, they're requesting 11.37 acres to Ag1 Agricultural and 35.06 <coughs> acres to Ag2 Agricultural and 10.75 not 10.75 of the city acreage, I'm sorry, located at 1075 Towning Lane. Uh, Commissioner Hunt made a motion to recommend a rezone the application of Emmanuel Channing Estate, requesting zone change on Track 7, consisting of 11.37 acres to Ag1 Agricultural and 35.06 acres uh, for the remaining tracks on the flat, 
before us today and add to our cultural. I gave you all a copy. Her motion kind of goes all over the place. Um, but uh, to add to agricultural, locate 1075 Channing Lane. The recommended land use map in the comprehensive plan recommends low density residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan, and there was no one there to speak against it. They are following the recommendations of the Corps of Engineers, so the property can be utilized by the owners. That motion was seconded by Commissioner Deepin after a roll call vote. Motion carried. I just got a couple of questions. I know they've been trying to go back and forth on this piece of property for a couple of years. Yes. Uh, but are they, are they, is this for them to inherit it or are they going to try to cut this up and develop it or what's their plan? It's, it's, it's to be sold. Yeah. But what, what happened is, and this went back during COVID, that we yeah. changed some of their zoning to commercial, some went to residential, yeah. other parts stayed Ag 1, some went to Ag 2. I mean, they had a little bit of everything up there. Um, then we find out that the road is owned by the Corps of Engineers. <laughs> and so basically what the Planning Commission has recommended is what the Corps of Engineers has recommended to us as a county. Um, they're, they're only going to allow the um, family members to do a certain number of tracks. They aren't allowing us to dedicate it as right away. It has to say easement because it's on a perpetual easement forever, you know, um, as far as the road itself. They're limited on to the driveways that's already there. So if they wanted to do an extra curb cut, so to speak, they would have to go through the hoops with Corps of Engineers trying to get it done, which probably will not happen. Um, but for the most part, that, that's what it is. I know they do have an interested buyer that wants to buy one whole side of the road. Yeah. Um, and I, I just was curious. I knew, I knew they were having some issues up there. I actually know what the whole, whole, whole deal was. And I didn't know they were trying to. I knew at one point, they were talking about trying to do something commercial up there, but they didn't know what well, it was. Maybe both stores or something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. But they won't allow it. The Corps of yeah. Engineers won't allow yeah. commercial. Yeah. Um, so the plat that was provided with it has already been to the Corps, <coughs> and that's what they agreed to. So we had to build the plat to their license. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, that's all I've got. And I will say about that one, of course, we'll be doing a second reading next next time, but, but we've put a lot of time into this uh, with the family, meeting with the core, and, and uh, I don't know how many meetings, probably a half a dozen or more that we've had just since I've been here. And uh, I will say that the family is very, very pleased that we're getting some resolve yeah. on, on these issues that they've been, been trying to get worked out. So. And ongoing for sure. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't know where it is on the docket, or if you want me to mention anything about it, um, or how much everybody else is aware about the floodplain application. Did you want any input on that? Uh, if you would please. Yeah, I was telling Jim a little about it at the animal shelter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, because that still showed as floodplain, even though it's been built up all these years, floodplain application had to be applied for. So we went the route to ask that we could waive public notice. You're required to do two weeks in a row in local paper. And so we put the application into them, hoping they would let us waive that as it's county government. And they said, no, I can't do it. So I submitted that. It should be in the paper Wednesday and again next Wednesday. Once that's completed, I'll kick it back to them to show proof that it's been in the paper. And hopefully from that point forward, we should go to move right on. Yeah. You know, how long it take them to get that done? I, I think if we already had our public notices, we might already had it back. I mean, okay. they, it was almost instantly, I mean, so it, they don't I know it was less anything. than a week. They just give you, they decide <coughs> to get they, it done. They take everything that we send to them. I have to send them, you know, topo maps and all different information, and then they make their determination off of that. Great. So that's where we are on that. Yeah. All right, thank you for that. Uh, if, if you don't mind, uh, hang around when we go to talk. I have Heritage Hills on the agenda. You got me? All right, good deal. All right, thank you, Julie. Any questions for you? We'll roll right on. Uh, now we have a committee reports, and uh, I, I'm going to make it in the future unless you guys tell me different. But uh, the morning meetings, I'll have the department heads every month, like last time. And then our, our night meetings, any of you guys that have anything to add as committee chairman, we'll do that. So 
Y'all good with that? I really thought that was very successful last meeting, having all of them here. But, uh, all right, so we'll just, we'll go down the list. Do you have anything on emergency management? If you could just, when they show up, tell them to have something prepared instead of just yeah. really bad ones. Well, I'll, yeah, we'll work on it. I'll do that. All right. So. <coughs> I don't have much. I just want Kip, they got back with us on a tornado map. It's one of the tornado silence stuff. They provide us a map that shows the uh, bird's eye view of the coverage of each siren. So we've been able to identify five or six spots where we'd like to eventually add some sirens. I invite all y'all to come out and look at that map and get your input on it. We're going to look into some either brick grant funding or hazard mitigation funding to see if we can get those projects funded. So, so we can keep that. You gave me a map. And I don't know what I've done with it unless I gave it back to you. No. I can't find yeah. it. Yeah. All right, but uh, and, and we probably need to look at that, you know, and possibly updating these other ones if we can roll that into one grant. But we'll we'll look at it on the brick brick grant. So all right, thank you, Chris. Any questions for Chris? Uh, parts, Mike. I was sitting the car got down there, and I think they end up putting quite a few loads of gravel on it. I think they ended up covering up a dense grade or something, trying to cover up some of the three minus. It's gonna put on the we put on there anyways to build it up when we do eventually decide to pave it. So it wasn't any money lost there. And he was able to clean up that all that asphalt that may go left there kind of so it looks real nice and uh, hopefully we keep it that way. And I have already charged the Brian and uh, Daniel Cole for maintenance with getting the parks ready. I mean it'll be here it is March in a week or two. Uh, we had a break-in or attempted break-in at Waterford Park. We have cameras at Waterford Park. We didn't really get to catch it. They tried to break in the back door that's in, of the concession stand that actually goes into a closet. And they had a piece of plywood with metal on it. They took a, a DeWalt tire grinder or something and cut the bolts off and took the plywood down and he took something and beat the doorknob off and try to get in. I don't think they got in. But, uh, I mean, it's probably a few hundred dollars to fix. But uh, I went looking at it, and I got to noticing some of the lights were not as bright as it could be. Uh, they needed some work done. This is just at Waterford. But I charged the Daniel to look at both of our parks. And, uh, and what we're going to do is uh, I, I asked him to, the light switch is inside the concession stand at Waterford Park. I asked him to put a uh, sodium vapor or something where at night uh, those lights could come on. And I even asked about putting a motion detector. So we're going to do one or the other. If somebody walks in there, we're, we're going to put uh, just put some LED lights uh, into these. Uh, there, there's four little old bugs, and part of them's covered with dirt dollars nest. And it's not a good thing. But we're going to put four brighter lights. I'd like it to be like motion sensitive. Now, if a squirrel runs up there, the lights will come on. But if a thug goes in there, the lights are going to go on too. Mm -hmm. And if the, when the sheriff's department and all is out on patrol, they see those lights on, it might be worth stopping in. Are the cameras the, worth anything out there? The cameras are good. They're actually, I mean, when you go out there, there's an old one and a new one that's up there, and it's it's fairly new, and they they are working, but it wasn't shining on that door. The door was here and it was like shining this way. And we even, I even had uh, Daniel to uh, look about if we could just block up that door because that door goes to a closet. And you can get to the closet when you're in the concession stand. So, but I want to make sure that it passes safety code and all that. But we were looking about possibly just laying concrete block and blocking that door that's out of sight. But, uh, uh, I've charged them with getting the parks ready because March rolls around, April rolls around, and uh, so they're on task with that. Our uh, little tractor, they was having trouble with the uh, automatic death blowing itself out. And uh, of course, we can haul the tractor and they're going to check on getting somebody to come look at it. And we needed to go to Lowe's to get some stuff. So I just I asked Brian and, and Daniel if they go to Lowe's, just take the tractor over to. John Deere and drop it off. And then it won't have to pay the service man and they can fix it and do whatever we need to do. And uh, I was looking for a guy down at the farm show to come look at our stuff uh, that works at, at Wright. You know, look at our mowers and stuff just to see what kind of trade or value. And I'm still planning on doing that. 
and I'll have something down the road if that suits everybody. Uh, not making any commitments, but we just need to evaluate our equipment as we talked about last week. So, anything else on parts? All right, thanks. Uh, Dan, safety? Uh, Nothing to report. All right, solid waste, Jim? Uh, yeah, uh, I would what <coughs> was to think about, again, hiring two part-time people uh, three days a week uh, for litter pickup in Robin County. You know, again, you know, with the tourist season basically coming on us here, you know, roads look pretty bad right now. You know, I, I went across the Blue Ridge today toward Bloomfield Hill. It looks like a garbage dump that look like side there, go all the way up through there, you know. So, you know, if we could hire two, even just do it seasonal during the summer time, so we can pay them out of our grant as long as we don't pay them any more than $100 a mile, which is what the grant calls for. So, you know, we can subsidize the people that go out in uh, groups and pick it up, but we're not getting enough groups to do that. So we can subsidize that with two part-time people, and that Karen Spencer with the Recycling Center uh, schedule them and give them a truck to go pick up you know, water and sign roads to them and, and uh, just give it a drive, you know. I mean, we hired four part-time uh, co-op pe co people. I mean, you know, we could look at maybe calling them co-op people. I don't know. But anyway, I think we need that. Just keep the county looking, you know, it, where it should be. So. And, um, and I don't know. I think Karen sent me a number that it's going to be seven or eight thousand that we send by out of that grant this time. Uh, now, one, one thing to consider I mean, the, the economy is not what it has been. I think we'll have even. I'm not against what you said, Jim. We, we, we should attempt that again. But I, I think we'll have even, even more participation in that. And by all means, if you guys see a spot that's extra bad, uh, and uh, we can tell Julie, we can tell Karen. I'll mention about going up Bloomfield Hill. I know there was a pretty good mess out 44 toward yeah, water. It's not, it's all over. Yeah. Of course, it has been gathering through the winter, and it'll be a big job cleaning the first cleaning up from spring. I don't know what happened. Up. Was it on 44 that come up from Dollar Store? It's pretty bad in that vicinity. And Lord, we're keeping the holes on there, man. Right, it's pretty bad in that vicinity, and, and I think Julie was going to check in to, to <coughs> kind of clean that. So, uh, but by all means, uh, you know, it's when we're out and about, you see a spot that's extra bad, let, let us know, and we'll, we'll try to address it. Well, you know, you know, back seven or 8,000 this year, you know, two years prior to that, we sit like 15 and 12, uh, respectively. Yeah. We're doing so, better. Yeah, but we could take that 7,000 and pay these and, you know, and come up with zero on that, that we don't have to send it back. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, we, we definitely need to keep attention on it. Uh, thanks, Jim. Veterans, Dan, anything? Uh, just uh, uh, went with Brian over and we looked at that office area. It's going to work well. He he's said he doesn't have anything stored in there that he needs other than those tires. Yeah, and they can come out. We can come out. They can come out. There's a table in there. We'll have to move out. But uh, we're just going to set it over by another table. That's yeah. good that that office is working better because that other plywood place, we may have to tear down and put more dog kennels in there. Uh, but that, that's good that that... Yeah, all it is is yeah. some desks and that pile of tires, like you said. There's a desk, a file cabinet, there's a box of old files that date back. Everybody says that they dated back to when we had a service technician. They used to do our work on our vehicles. Service work. It's uh, just four years. Yeah. Four years ago. Yeah. But, but anyway, that, that'll work good. And, and they got a door that they can get in and out when they need to. I've, I've got a, we're going to have to replace the lock set on that office and I'll give Daniel and uh, uh, Brian Brian a key to it. Yeah. Well, um, and then uh, they'll be able to get in and out of it as well as uh, whoever, I'm going to give one person from Ambed's key. So. All right, well, that sounds good. We'll take care of that. The equipment, Jack, got anything? Uh, nothing that I'm aware of. That's a good thing. Hey. Well, <laughs> no, we got some stuff we're working on. I know we got some stuff we're working on.
work no but usually when I get done find it's something big. So. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You didn't have anything to do. Uh, telecommunications, Zach? Um, nothing. Nope. <laughs> All right. Uh, administration, Tory. Uh, Tourism Economic Development Committee, Dan, anything? No. Um, well, we've got lots going on with Tourism Economic Development. I know we meeting, but uh, let me see it. I'll keep you posted. The building grants, Will? I don't know. So. Um, I got something out with that one. Um, the handrail out back, oh, the handrail out back, according to the basic business, we'll be down here and try to get that put on our place this week. We've been on the weather, and of course, the last new stretch of weather we had, uh, Daniel was able to get over there and uh, tear out some old concrete and draw it out to get that reformed. Uh, so, hopefully, this week we can get that project took care of. Uh, so. Scott, just an update. The gentleman from Serve Pro came today. Uh, they're going to probably start painting in here maybe Wednesday or Thursday and then get those cabinets fixed. Yeah. yeah, where we had the water damage and then they're going to put the, the baseboard back around here. I asked Daniel about this table being jacked up. And is it permanently unlevel or is we no, need to unjack they, this table? They've got things sitting under it so the water would dry. I mean, so the oh, water okay. dry. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, or we just get a new table. Oh, that's all right. We got this uh, last year, like 18,000. Yeah. Uh, we, we need to do a lot of stuff. But, uh, all right. Uh, all right. Well, open off every time this room closes and stuff. But, and a lot of dry. Hopefully, we got the flooding problem fixed. Uh, all right. Anything else on the <coughs> committees? We're rolling along good. Community events pavilion. We'll get started. Uh, We've got lots of things we can talk about uh, on this, Jim. I'll just let you start. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, I put all the information in there, drawings and things, uh, in there just for your information. Again, it, and uh, with Arco Steel Buildings, the calls can relate with putting up, uh, you know, idea of what it was, was going to cost. Uh, and I did, uh, I had a sample bid that QK4 gave us for the Little Elk Bridge Project. It's a lengthy bid project you know, to send out to contractors. I was wondering if we could eliminate what we talked about last week, uh, meeting of doing a, the site plan and all that, and just uh, bid it out and let the, the contractor take care of all of that. And uh, I got two different uh, versions of that. Uh, the guy that's building our animal shelter, Doug White, uh, I talked to him this morning, and he says that uh, uh, he's a builder, commercial builder. He says, we, as a county, we have to have a stamp site plan uh, drawings on that building to protect the county uh, down the road. He says, uh, we, we just have to have it. So it's something he said, you just wanted to break down and, and do it regardless of what it costs. So before, he said, there, you're not going to get any contractors coming to bid on it without that site plan. Well, we ain't never got a bid just to get the site plan yet. We got bids to do a bunch of other crap we don't need. Yeah. Well, we we can we can I guess go ahead and. I'm not sure if we get people to try to see about getting the site plan and and, just, and then get back in time for the meeting. Okay. I well, see what they say. Well, why don't you continue talking, Zach? And you know, I will. Me and Dan, really committee, and maybe try to get some people to uh, engineers that would give us a stamp set of drawings and give us support on what it would cost. You know, go that route. So yeah. That's what I'm Try to do. Now, I, I, I talked to Mr. Roy, too. He was in the office. We were talking about the animal shelter. And I brought up about the church that he built out there that we went and toured that, that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, my understanding from him was that, that his group, well, this is just his group, uh, I guess, and I'm guessing since he could, anyone could. But uh, when, when they built that out there, they did everything. Uh, now we got to get the core sample done. That's going to be a requirement, but we can get anybody to do that as long as they're uh, qualified, uh, you know, recognized by the state or whomever to do that. And once that's done, uh, he would take care of the excavating, and it would all be figured in one package. And he would have a building package that would be stamped to be just like our animal shelter. Uh, now on the animal shelter, basically we bought a set of plans for people to use and go by 
And there's a chance, from what I understood, and I could have misunderstood, but there's a chance that the builder would provide all that we need and we not have to hire an engineer. So, but by, by saying all that, uh, I don't think all I'm going to is if they have an engineer on staff. Well, but we'll, we'll, we'll do, and I, I really think we're getting close to being ready to move on that, uh, move on this. Let, let's look at these buildings. Just I'll just challenge everybody. Let's look at this, the buildings that Jim has here. And if you haven't looked at that church out there, see if something similar to that suits us. I mean, I, I'm done convinced that I think that's a, that's a good move. That's for one building. Now, and, and I think the idea of having the two buildings, whether they're connected or not connected, like we have in the, in our binder here, here's the one connected, and then you know the one not connected is in there too. So one of these two designs is a pretty good way for us to go, and if we can agree that that these are pretty decent, uh, that'll narrow down a whole lot of what we're doing. Uh, I, I sure would like. To, uh, let's, let's get moving on this now. I don't want to move so fast that we miss something or we do something wrong. No, but let's just let's keep it going. Obviously, we wrong the buildings except for we don't have fifty million dollars in the bank. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah. Well, you know, once we once we get this out for bid, we, we can specify, you know, uh, with, with you know two buildings. You know, the one is just going to be a roof only, so it's not going to be that expensive. You know, compared to the enclosed ones. But uh, once we get a, 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 a quote on what it's going to cost to build these, we can ask them uh, to figure the one building as in one price and what it would cost to add the second one. So we, if, if it comes up too high, we can eliminate the back building. But let's, let's get a price on the two. I think we've all agreed these, this concept is what we want to go with. We've agreed that a long time ago. It's just uh, uh, getting it done. So, you know, uh, but we have to get a, we have to get somebody to bid on it to give us a price of if it's going to cost $2 million. Well, that's a million to eliminate one building, go with it, and then we can go to that next step. But we have to, you know, if we're going to get a bid, let's get the bid on the whole package and we can always reduce it. I agree. I, I feel like we can build one building or two buildings and do the parking lot and not have to borrow of that. I think, I, I just, I, I'm very optimistic. I get accused of that, but that's all right. Uh, I, I think, get down here, on, I think we can do it. <laughs> well, you know, this, this front building, the front building there uh, that's enclosed and finished, uh, and I still like for you guys that haven't seen the church building out there that, that Mr. White built, uh, look at the inside of it, you'll see exactly, you know. I like the one which connected to you, you know. Uh, I, I, we, I thought, or do you like, I like the separate one because we had talked about the fact that <coughs> for fire safety, for fire safety, uh, yeah. if you can take the two buildings, you might have to have a sprinkler well, system. Well, yeah, yeah. And um, also, you got a courtyard between the two, like where you can put tables or whatever, and, and uh, so people who want to smoke or whatever can go outside. But you know, we didn't have a builder or an architect to give us, you know, like the, the front, the front of the building that's going to face one, uh, 155, give us three options of the type of finish, you know, the doors, and, you know, the exterior finish on it. Uh, give us three options of what it's going to cost, and we can choose, you know. So, right. Well, we have to get to that step. Yeah. But we're, we're, we're going to keep the, keep the ball rolling to get to that step. And he, on old business, and Corey, I mean, Corey had some conversations earlier about the moving forward with the donation of the land for access to our spot. Uh, I'll just, do you have anything to add, Corey? I talked to Queen Susan today. Um, there's a scrivener's error of sorts with what was annexed to the city, so I just got to get that resolved um, before we can uh, hammer out whatever details we need for that 80 uh, foot by whatever the length is up to goes. But once that gets ironed out um, with the city annexation, then um, we'll, we'll be able to hopefully get the final lots in that. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's on the burner and, and, and in the process.
and, and also, of course, still, uh, he has some other work to do as far as getting the water in the sewer back to Beehive, which would be the same water and sewer that we would plan to utilize, but all that's in the works. Uh, I have, a, I'll go to the, the Heritage Hills. Julie, if you would come to the mic and kind of tell us our options as to how we can move forward with this or what we have to do to move forward. Well, I mean, I really, I can't give you the options. I mean, that, that's up to you all. But all I was gonna say is, you know, I can tell you that there are two letters of credit. That, that question has been posed to me. Um, we do have a letter of credit on one of the phases that was renewed February 1st. So it was renewed for one year. That is with the People's Bank, and that is for $43,130. I guess my question is, how many years does that just keep getting paid and the road not being fixed? Or when can we decide this is enough, we want it fixed? And there's not really anything written in there on that. Um, when this development was done, it was under the old guidelines, um, subdivision regulations from 1992. It didn't necessarily specify when it had to be completed or done that I'm aware of. I mean, I've had several that we've held letters of credit for years on. Um, but I think, you know, maybe with Corey's assistance, I think the county should be able to determine, you know, if the testimony that was given earlier, you know, it's not, okay, the top coat's not on, so, you know, the finished coat, it's not there, it's only <coughs> really done. But I think if everything else is deteriorating under it, and this is put, going to put the county into a financial, you know, bind, this is not going to cover what you would need to fix it properly. Surely there's a way you all can come up with some kind of findings to, you know, require it to be done. I guess my question is, so that was taken over with one coat. It was... What, what was happens a lot of times, they're, they're taken over for right. limited maintenance, and then we hold the letter of credit that's supposed to guarantee that it's good for a year. Well, on the one phase, we never got to that point. It, it, and the reason it was held at its full amount at that point was because it was determined that well, I don't want to say it was determined, but it, there was um, discussions as to whether the road was paid completely. You know, I had some saying, well, that pavement didn't go far enough, but yet others said it went far enough, you know. So there was... Uh, I mean, my, like this road sign. The road sign you can't read currently is on county-maintained road, so we should fix that. Well, I, mean, I think the county can replace the sign. I don't think that's a question. Okay. Yeah. All right. Also, if we have taken over a road and it's, and it's deteriorating, then is it not for us to put it in a rotation to fix the part we've taken over, not the part we haven't taken over, the part we've taken over? I think that there's a part that you have taken over completely, 100%, and there's nothing seen, and, and you know, there's no letter of credit. In, you know, holding on it, then I think you could. Is there a but I think if there's a letter of credit still on it, on it, there's probably something, something there. Yeah. What do you say? Is there a portion of this that was 100% taken over? Um, I would have to go back through the ordinances and see which was, you know, which roads, which mileages, you know, things of that nature. Or under was just the <laughs> very first portion of it when you first ran and turned right and sleeping. You can trace or whatever. That's your first problem, yeah. But you said that there's a portion of it that, like, we... That's it, that's that we, that we kind of took it over, but we kind of didn't, right? Um, and I think that yeah. was on... Actually, that's yeah. the phase one. And see, what we do, or did, uh -huh. then, was, you know, we never release a, a letter completely because phase two is served by phase one. you got to drive through one to get to two. And so... There's still eleven thousand thirty-one dollars on phase one. That's supposed to be making sure it doesn't get tore up, so people can get to phase two. So was that a bond that the county cashed in, and now it's sitting somewhere, or what? It where is that? Because that's not part of the forty-three one third. No, it's another letter of credit. Two, two separate ones. Okay. 
And it's so good. We just send a certified letter from the county attorney saying you have X amount of time to accomplish it, or we're going <coughs> to call the bonds. Call the bonds, and we're going to adopt the roads, and we're going to fix them ourselves. And I think that would be something Corey would have to research to make sure you're okay. Should we reach out to the developer and ask him if he would really like to release the bonds? Will he, will he do that? Would he do that? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just saying. And so he wouldn't have renewed this one at the beginning of the month. Hey, this is just a question because I'm new. Uh, can we raise the ball? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can at this point because it was already set. It needs to be put in the phrase. I just don't know. I mean, it, it might be unprecedented like we haven't done it before in this setting, but just because we haven't done it, does that mean you can't do it? I don't know. You know, at least we should have But they want to leave a mess, and we only have 43000 to clean it up. That ain't <coughs> right either, so we need to. Need and, to uh, that may be something right. Because that would be a, a, right. a true thing, you know, prices of thing materials gone up. I mean, because so you know this, this isn't going to cover it. It started 16 like, years yeah. ago when they put this in, roughly. The subdivision was started in 2002. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. 22. The first years. letter of credit was in place in 2006. Well, I would like us to get some answers as to when we can say you got to have it by this date or we're doing something. Because we can't go another 22 years and be setting. I like my career. I want to take, take care. Hurry. I want to take care of Harry Chills, but if there's a way that maybe Corey can find something in the law that says that we can take care of Harry Chills, but we don't have to do a half a million dollar <coughs> work on a forty-three thousand dollar bond, that would be awesome too. Well, this uh, so count on you, Corey. <laughs> yeah, we, we we need to get some answers as to what we can do with these bonds as to, you know, they shouldn't go into eternity. And that, that's so, something I think we need to look at is maybe develop into our ordinances that, okay, if a bond goes three years, we're going to raise it 10%. If it goes another two years, we're going to raise it another 10%. And you've got that, that now. Oh, we I mean, that's, that. we've learned from our, you know, <laughs> past transgressions. So now it, it is like that. Now they have to build the road up front, plus put a letter of credit on it. But this was on the old. And this is on the old guidelines. But I do, in 2007 is when um, Lincoln <coughs> Ray's Road Road Place was taken on. Um, so I know those two were taken on by the county as far as 2007. 100% taken on. 100% taken on by the county. Um, but you still have that one little bond on it. Because there's no top code on it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And see, originally, so this even goes as far back as they were only paying 100000 per mile. So since then, we've raised it to 160000 per mile. And now it's by KYTC prices. So it's all. We, just, well, we, we, need, to, we need to see what our options are yeah. and give some relief to get our roads fixed. Or you don't have all that next meeting, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk with Julian first. Yeah. Um, I'll talk with Julian and Todd as well, just to get an idea of what the okay. specific uh, limits are. Right? I think, you know, mm -hmm. they, while you're doing it, maybe you find out what Todd, you know, have Todd look at it. Yeah. You know, as it stands right now, what's it take to fix? I know what it takes, because I've been working on this since last year. Right. It, it don't take a lot. Well, it, it, don't, it don't take a lot. The bond, he thinks the bond will cover it now, not the top coat. Me and Todd haven't discussed the top coat on that last part. Well, I mean, if he was going to put the base coat, top coat, and do it like you're going to do it, what's that called? You need to make the road longer, like the gentleman said, on that one stretch, and then we got to build a, a couple of the shoulders up when you come in, the pitch is too steep. Yeah. And you can repair that with rock, a few loads of rock. We'll repair that, Todd told me. And then you need to add this many feet of blacktop, and then the counties will take the road over. So what's the and cost? The developer, the developer told me he was not willing to lay the blacktop. So what, do, do you have, does Todd have a price on what it would cost, like Mike said, to finish it right now? Yeah. Will the bond cover it? Yes. The bond will cover it. Oh, okay. oh. I, I don't know about the top code. I know about what Todd told me. No, no. See, look at the top coat. Of course, the top, the top coat is on another section, correct? So 
over the whole thing. The, the 43,000 is on the extending the road and the shoulders that are too steep. And then the well, other. Well, because the, the area that wasn't as far back, that's not phase one, that's the second phase. That's phase two. Right. Yeah, so now that's the 43,000 that's included in that one. The one that needs the top coat? All right, well, let's get some more details. Everything is in this other division right now has just been laid in the base. Any, any, any block top in there, I've been in several times. So there's only base laid in that thing. So the whole thing needs to be top dressed and widened. So we do it. And leave the fuel and pave and everything. 43 belts ain't going to cover that. No, 43 won't pave the whole place. What do you call it? What do you call it? To, to pave the place out of 130? Something like that. 100, yeah. But I mean, most of the road, except where it ain't done, is pretty nice road. And I mean, it's holding up well. So, we just need to stop it. What is this thing to be maintained? It's like the first issue we've had with bonds. We're going to have to address bonds. Right. Uh, I say we let Todd uh, give us a. Uh, we need to figure it out. All the way we do for the whole thing. What's yeah. the cost? Yeah, we'll, I'll, have him, I'll have him look at it. And I'll have something for next meeting as as we'll call you probably. Good night. Let's say I'm good. All right. All right. Thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, ordinance seven, the second reading on doing the silo farm. What page are you on? I don't know. Ninety two. Right there. Ninety two? Yep. Uh, so uh, this is where we did call a bond, and uh, y'all remember we voted, we voted to approve the first reading. So I entertain a motion to approve the second reading. So moved. So second. We have a motion by Mike, second by Zach, to approve the second reading of Ordinance Seven, which has adopted uh, the balance of Crafted Drive, Kennedy Court, Roosevelt Court, and Adams Court, which is in the silo farms. The county adopted these roads. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. If you would, pass that to the clerk and we'll sign it and we'll get her done. And then they can start construction. Fixing the pipes. All right, new business, the bicentennial celebration. Uh, in your packets, uh, Brittany put together a lot of uh, back and forth information that we had with uh, uh, one of our local uh, celebrities on participating in it and uh, it's just in there for information only but I want to bring it to the community's uh, uh, awareness about our bicentennial on July 27th this year the county will be 200 years old and uh, we're all open for suggestions but uh, an Oktoberfest which will be in October uh, first weekend they are interested in making it a bicentennial celebration also, but uh, we have a time capsule to be dug up on July 27th and open. So, and that's on a Saturday. And kind of how we're talking about it on my end of the woods, neck of the woods is that uh, maybe we'll have a celebration that one day, maybe the night before. Uh, maybe get a stage set up and have local bands play. If y'all know any local bands, we'll have beer too. we can. <laughs> we can. I was talking to Sharon. So, <laughs> oh, that's good. There you go. There you go. There you go. And then with the October Fest uh, committee, and uh, they're already putting it in the works. I was talking to her the other day. They're, uh, because it is the bicentennial for October Fest that they plan on. Uh, uh, showcasing all the music of uh, local people. Yeah. Instead of bringing somebody in from, yeah. from somewhere else, and they got some uh, big ideas, you know, that they want to do to help, uh, you know, celebrate the bicentennial. Uh, I think they're all uh, great things. So when, that, when we get further down the road, you know, I hope that uh, this course sees we might need to throw them a couple extra bones, put on a big chimney. And, you know, it, I don't think, of course you all tell me, but I don't think a lot of people is re are ready to celebrate for a whole week like maybe we used to. But we could do a Friday night and a Saturday. Uh, like to have some history involved. Of course, opening this time capsule, 
Uh, there's people a little older than me that remember when they buried it. I was six or seven years old. I don't remember. I know where it's buried, but I don't know what's in it. But, so several I people live. Yeah. Well, we'll see. But I think it'd be quite exciting to open up something that's 50 years old that a lot of folks would be interested. So we can make make that. Maybe we could bury another one. That's what I was about to say. We need to bury something. There you go. See, the excitement's already started. Thank you all. But we need to, I guess I'm challenging the community to come up with something. See Brittany down in Economic Development Tourism. Miss Lawson in the library. I've been talking to her about how the library can see us, and they've been talking with the genealogical society about how they could contribute so we've got a lot of conversations going and i just invite everyone to participate and we'll figure out figure out what we need to do but again we got to get to going so that's that's man why i have that in there uh, next item is a veterans memorial uh here's basically what we have over here at the war memorial if you have a, a relative and they don't have to be a Spencer County, but a relative, someone in the county, and you want to put their name on the wall, the way it works right now is you, you bring a $50 check into the judge's office and pay a $50 check and fill out a form as to how, you know, how, how this relative or how your, this relative's family or whatever is connected to Spencer County. Uh, I aimed to bring a sample of that and I couldn't find it over there. But if you uh, ask you guys to uh, come in, we'll print you one off or anyone in the community. But right now, we, you come in, you fill out this form, you give us $50, and then we buy a $14 plaque, and we place it on the wall. And it's there. Well, I, that sounds great, but I think we can do better than that for our veterans. And I was going to propose to you guys that we just buy the $14 plaque. And then I may put that in my budget if you all tell me to. I'll put it in the budget and we can discuss it then. But we can motion to wait. I'll take it over here. All right. For county residents. Well, anybody. Uh, anybody connected to the county that would waive the $50 and put a clock up for them? Yeah. So so I second it. All right. We. Uh, I don't know if Jim might beat you that. Well, that'd be fine. Let's go. We got a motion by Will, seconded by Jim, to uh, waive the $50 fee that we're charging currently and replace it with uh, uh, anyone of uh, veterans connected to the county uh, by family. Uh, the county purchased the $14 plaque and put it on the wall. Is that good? Good, uh, and what, what the county has been doing with the, the rest of the $50 was maintaining the war memorial and buying flags and so forth, but you can find that in your budget. we can find that in our budget. Well, there is a uh, $750 line item in the budget. Yeah, and, and we, we keep flags stocked, and whenever a flag mm -hmm. gets in bad shape, we try to notice it, but sometimes the, the veterans notice them before we get notice them. And, we get them changed. On that, uh, I'm going to bring a thing to the court here as soon as I can figure it all out on buying new flag poles because if you've ever seen how you have to change out one of those flags, it's somebody that's climb up a ladder, stand on the top of that wall, pull that flag pole out of that thing, hand it down to somebody else, then you have to unclip the flags while you're standing on top of that wall. Well, let's let's, back let's, up let's there get some meals for that. So they make flag poles with just a pulley system, and I think that's what we need to do because it's. You I've been up on that wall a few times, and it's. You got some kind of image there. Going on. Uh, <laughs> we we can we can do better than that, uh, but uh, well let's let, be let, expensive. But, but let, let's let's vote on this motion and. In, in your discussion on uh, re replacing the uh, how we handle the plaques on the war memorial, uh, thank you all. This is real exciting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. And Dan, if you would uh, get with us and we'll look about getting some prices to replace those flag poles. I'll, I'll research it all and bring it to okay. the department when I, when I figure it all out. I got to measure them and everything else. So. 
I know you all get ladders, and I think I've seen you all out there on la on ladders, but I've never been there close when you up there. When you got a change, yeah, you one, just have to use the ladder to get on top of the wall. Yeah, we would do better than that. <laughs> He's just looking out his window where the wind is, thing. I've had I've had folks come in my office pointing at the people bank flag, telling me that it's bad, and I'm like, that's not our flag, but I'll go tell them. They changed it out, and so forth. But uh, yeah, we uh, yeah, it, it's. Thank you all. I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I knew you all would like that one. But that would be easy just for us. But that's, that's the least we can do to recognize our veterans. So thank you all. So we'll move on beyond that. Uh, do something for the Humane, Humane Society. Okay, all right, well, we'll just, we'll bring that up again if uh, the Humane Society, if you're listening, or if the message gets to them, the, the folks, um, do we, is there anything that anyone in the audience knows that we need to discuss about this? All right, uh, well, we just have them reach out when, when we'll we do, we'll pay for it. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll pass it, no action uh, for now. Okay, uh, number four, the, the county clerk, and we're rolling along real good. So uh, on page, no, on page 100, uh, we have, uh, Lynn, if you'd like to address that. Before each election, um, we ask that fiscal court go ahead and approve, approve the payment for the precinct workers. So once they work and it's verified, we send that information, that spreadsheet over to your office, they can get paid. Uh, in a timely manner. So that's the sixteen fifty an hour for the early voting precinct officers. They get paid by the hour um, because it's over multiple days. The precinct officers that serve on election day only, it's a set rate of $150 for that day plus $25 to attend the mandatory training. So <coughs> I wanted to get a jump start, and I know it's early, but I wanted to not just to tick all these items off my to-do list. So I wanted fiscal court's approval to pay these people once they once I show proof that they have worked. I'll make that motion. Second, so, sir. All right, we have a motion by Jim, seconded by Mike, uh, to approve the uh, uh, pay for the precinct officers. Uh, they're listed on page 100. I'll, I'll just I'll read all these land uh, okay. so I'll get it right. Sure. It's uh, 1650 an hour for the early voting on May 16, 17, and 18, and then uh, also two precincts officers will serve in the excused in-house early voting, and they're paid 1650 an hour. Correct. Yes, sir. All right, and then uh, the precinct election officers who serve on election day are paid 150 for the day plus $25 to attend the training, and then $50 if they are designated as an alternate. Right. So all the, that way I want to make sure everybody's picked up. So um, that would be the motion that, that, that we got on the floor. Any discussion on that? Here, all right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. All right. The, uh, on page 101 and 102 and 103 is uh, uh, a request that I got. Uh, I think Daniel and Lynn had, had been discussing uh, this, and if you'd like, I'll let you discuss that. Do we need to take any action on requesting the county employees for setup and take down of the voting equipment that was included in this email? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll I'll, I'll just I'll take care of that. Okay. Just like we did. Right. That suits you, okay? That's fine. Uh, how many do you need? About the same three to three or four? Yes, three to four is, is fine. Okay. And while while we're on this, uh, Lynn got at least part of your new election voting machines in mm -hmm. 
And then the other part is coming, understand? Uh, Felicia went out there to let them in, so I'm not sure exactly how much we got. We've got 10 machines that were due us with that grant money, and I don't know how many we got in and yet I apologize. Yeah, that's fine. However, we had no room in there. I mean, we can't turn around and we're going to have to have some extra room to store that equipment. That's why Daniel and I talked about possible solutions to storage, and he mentioned a storage trailer, not a trailer, but a yeah. It's a container. storage container. Yes. And he said they're temperature controlled, um, you can run electric to it, um, we could have cameras up, which we'll have to have cameras. Um, and we don't we don't know where we put it, but this is just throwing it out there as a possible solution to more election storage area for the large equipment. What is this uh, bid? Like what's the time span? Is this like I think the forever? Is this like a year? What is it? One is renting probably a month. Buying. One's renting for a month, eight twenty-five a month, or buying it for forty-two thousand. So it's purchased and or leasing. Forty-four thousand delivery charge and set up all that. Do you know, Lynn, if there is any um, board of elections, any state money that would pay for the, a container or a, a building Not to store this. equipment? We've, we've gotten all the money that we're going to get, say, yes. for about $1,000 out of that first trough of money. Yeah. That $25 million that they talked about at your training. They did, it is. So unless they come up with more money, as it is right now, we, we have no more money coming to us. Okay, what are, go ahead, Will. No, you can well, I was going to say, what are we going to do with the voting machines that are being replaced? Because if they were out of there, then you have room. Uh, I don't know that we want to get rid of those. Um, I don't know if we're going to ever go back to precinct level voting. I don't know what is going to be required of us. Um, I know the Secretary of State would like to have more voting locations. He brings that up at every meeting. Um, our plan is vote centers. That's what we've done since COVID. Uh, in fact, our plan is up for approval tomorrow at the State Board of Election meeting. Um, I don't know. I've not even considered getting rid of what we've got already with the print on demand. I have not even considered that because I don't know who, if we can sell them to somebody. I don't know. I talked to her. Can just move those until Lynn gets a definite what she wants to do, like the extra room that we were going to give to the veterans? I mean, we can stock that stuff somewhere. Or can we stack what's in there? Stack it up and make some space. I don't know that you can stack them on top of each other. I don't know that the, the digital components are good with you stacking them on top of each other. I don't know if they're even configured or flat on top where they can do that. I'll try to go by that this week and see if we can come up with some room if that'll work. Could you, could you build more shelving, more more shelving in the middle part of that room? room? The yeah. shelving is great for the smaller components, but these are big boxes. I mean, you know, they're big scanners that when you scan your ballot in, they fall, the, the ballot falls to the bottom. So they're not, you can't put them up on shelves. They're too bulky. Um, and everything that we have up on the shelf. A bulky man to pick them up there How many of those do you have? Yeah. Hey, call them. Uh, mm -hmm. We have 10 of the scanners plus two of the print on demands that the state bought us during COVID. Um, plus some spares. We have some spares. They recommend you have a couple of spares in case one goes down. Uh, all right. Let me ask you this. So do you have to keep the old machines that are being replaced on 60-day camera footage as now, well as the new ones? Now. Because we're probably going to use those old machines for the primary election. So we don't have enough time to do training on the new on on new demand. ones. Yeah, so now cheap. that the new ones are here, you got to keep them on camera? Anything, anything that's a, an election um, piece of equipment. Mandate. Anything that we, that we of use. Of course it's an unfunded mandate. Right? I'm sorry? So anything that we use for the election has to be on Yes. Okay. So we oh. can't move any of this to storage if you're planning to use it. 
I'm, I'm going to use the what oh, we currently that, have. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. even expecting the new well, stuff to come. Yeah. Yeah. If, 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 yeah. if it suits you, yeah. land with us. Uh, I'm uh, doing 44 grand for the swap. Well, if, if we can catch some of your guys in your office. Well, I mean, hopefully, hopefully and, you know, here in the next, before the, 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 the bill actually happens in the fall, hopefully we'll have an animal shelter with a big storm area beside it, and we can bring Bob in and build something there. She's see. got all kinds of cameras over there because that's all that's on. My monitor is Karen's cameras. My cameras aren't on there for some reason. I don't know. They put well, you them keep in good eye on the recycling center. She's got 12 right? cameras, 16 cameras. It's like, shoot, I need to yeah, that was Store what you were supposed to have. There. <laughs> That's what you were supposed to have. I was excited about hers, and I thought, Lynn's going to love these. Well, that's all I can see right now, because <laughs> I can't see my election equipment. Doesn't. Well, you keep an eye on the recycling. I'm doing it. I'm doing but, it. Uh, well, <laughs> this week. Yeah, can we, we come by, and uh, good. We, we, we come by, and, and we know you got to have the room, and we'll make sure you got the room if, if, if the machines can't set up on one another, but we could could have a shelf over a, a row of them, and then another row could set safely. I mean, we'll we'll try to come up with something, and if not, we'll just have to discover more room. And if not, we'll have to, you know, bottom line is, if we have to, we have to do this or do something, you know, something different. The thing that is, we don't need that space all the time. But we're going to have 16 plus thousand ballots that we have to put on tables in that first room. Okay. And it, I mean, truly, we walk over crates to, to try to, we have to check each of those ballots to make sure the sequence is right, to make sure the ballot case is right. So those are in there for about a month before the election, the ballots. So we'll have ballots in there. We'll have the extra machines in there. I, I just, I don't know where we're going to put stuff. Well, like I said, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully by this fall, before fall, we got to do the other company. We'll have, yeah. We'll yeah. have, we'll have, well, hopefully we'll have something, you know. Well, here's a new solution, too. If you're not using this new equipment, we can move it to a different location for right now. Uh, if it's under cameras and lock and key. Wow, it's not in use. I thought if it wasn't in use, it doesn't have to be under it, cameras. It's still in selection equipment, and it's got to be. I'll, I'll talk to State Board of Elections tomorrow if we're not using it, yeah. if it has to be under camera. I'm kind of thinking it does. Well, while you're talking to them, tell them to put mandate and stuff unless they're going to give us some money to pay for it. I'm sure that works. <laughs> Don't give them a phone number. All right. Well, I'll come by this week. Yeah, and then, uh, of course, I, I have a meeting with the Board of Elections on the 28th. Yes, sir. And we, I'd like for us to look, you know, we can, I won't, we'll answer all the questions in, hopefully. That would be great. So, all right. All right, good deal. Courthouse painting estimates. Now, we have all these painting estimates in here, and Corey and I was having a conversation, and we got to have three bids to get reimbursed from AOC. And since we have four bids, you think, well, you've got more than three, but if it's over 40000 we have to put an ad in the paper. So we probably would have to uh, put this in the paper, and then... I was just wondering to come up with 16000 everyone else is 50 some thousand. Uh, I kind of looked through it, but... Well, I was kind of looking at that. There's, most of these are usually some kind of a corrosion, like an acid spray. Do like this to do the washing and stuff, and then that, that first one there, the real cheap one is just a kind of couple of layers of hair. And we're not yeah. sure if the first one included yeah. the part of the office where, uh, of the building where I am and where the circuit clerk is upstairs. Yeah, I don't see that on the picture either. So, so but what what I'll do if, if you, no one objects, we'll uh, we'll put it in the newspaper and get them to rebid again, and we'll come back. That's why I want to go ahead and get started on this. Have you spoke to AOC about any of this? Uh, about getting the pay for this? Yeah. Nope. Was this, <laughs> was this advertised? Oh, boy. No, no. So how, how do we get these? Yeah, I asked Daniel to get them. Okay. But see, if they were under the procurement law, if they were all under 40000 and I hoped that they would be, yeah. we wouldn't have to advertise. Right. And, uh, well, I guess we'll have two of them are. Two of them are under 40, but we got to have three for LC to pay for a portion of it. 
the, the fire cars good isn't talking about fixing any concrete headers or anything, any windows, any fixing any of the window issues, that sort of thing. The rest of them are talking about talking and fixing the concrete and the scraping and acid washing and so there's some differences there. So we'll, uh, I'll make another step, make some more steps on that. And then we make sure we get some practice to have this customer student. Well, I tell you these, well, I think I could walk around with every one of them. So I think they're after the apples. I just think that, that what they chose to do, what they're chosen, what they're choosing. To but do they were all showed the same thing. Yeah, all of them. And I also recommend just checking with the FCC because they can be finicky, as we know. Uh, well, we know. Uh, um, but I mean, and again, it's it's not it's not for me to decide. It's for this court to decide. But, I would hope everyone would agree that we need to paint our courthouse. Mm -hmm. well, we definitely need to. There's the, the, the windows need to be took care of. There's the concrete panel. There. There's a lot of this issue we need to be took care of. So and I agree we need to do something now. Whether we get to do $60,000 worth of something. Well, I, I don't disagree with you. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll go through the steps on that. And also, the getting the gutters fixed. I've got some bids, but I didn't get them in your packet in time. Uh, but uh, I'll have them next meeting. But they're they're not a lot of expense, and uh, the, the gutters need some work. I know we'll stand up early. They need work. I think worse than the tank. Uh, well, it all needs to be fixed. We got to take care of the road building there. Uh, item six on there, which is in page one nineteen, and uh, basically uh, I need to type a letter on our letterhead. Uh, I'd like us to ask Representative Tipton and also Senator Higdon to uh, to get us uh, fifty thousand dollars of funding out of the state budget to fund a facility plan for our Spencer County Sanitation District. And what what's in place right now? The city has uh, since the city has the, the sewers in town. Years ago, they had the. And you, I think you guys have seen this information. Uh, there, there was that photo that had the, the sewer going all the way over to Oaks Lane and going around the lake. That's a facility plan. Well, it's it's due to make a new facility plan. And the Division of Water, when I went visiting with them, they said that if the sanitation district brought a facility plan, they'd approve it. If the city brought a facility plan, they'd approve it. So uh, the chairman of the uh, sanitation district uh, was requesting and James Allen, uh, Representative Tipton, suggested that if we voted to request funding to get the plan, that, that then they would try to get it. It's not a guarantee, but it's it's a so process to ask. Second. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Will, uh, to request and send a letter of support for Representative Tipton and Senator Higgins <coughs> to, uh, to uh, assist us with the funding of $50,000 to draw a facility plan for the sanitation district. Any discussion? How much is the total plan going to cost? If, if that's going to that. assist us, how much are we going to be assisted? <laughs> no, we're we're not. I'm not aiming for us to pay a dime. Okay, so this is going to cover the report. Yes. Okay. And and again, it's a request to get funding. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying it's a it, it's out of the realm of us getting it, but we. <laughs> You know, the, with the Division of Water saying they'll approve a plan, and the plan that's in play right now is needs to be adjusted. It needs to be revised. Uh, it's old. It's just about out of date. And uh, you, you'll need this. Whomever has it will need it for growth to move forward. Uh, and what I'll do is if we approve this tonight. Uh, we'll type a letter on the letterhead that says at, at tonight's meeting, the fiscal court voted. Uh, for this request and so on and so forth. Uh, could I ask this? Yes. Okay, the city did the first one. Is that correct? Back in 2009, okay. I think. Okay. That's the one that's in play right now. Right, right now. Okay. The county does this one. Does that eliminate that one all together? And then the san our, our sanitation district is in control of it instead of the city? Now, how much control? I can't answer how much control. We do know that our ordinance for our sanitation district allows us uh, the entire area that the city doesn't already serve. All right. 
Now, like that. And how that's much water? question. Right? Well, but how much water that holds when you talk about this facility playing that division of water proves I can't answer that question. But uh, but if we we did get a facility plan together and we would probably uh, if we did get approved then we would vote to hire an engineering firm to get it done for us. Well, that be the steps we would would be taking and. Uh, you know, we'll know, we should be able to know the exact cost. I'm sure we'll probably have to bid it out since it's over 40000 to get it done. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of variables. By us doing this, the city could jump up and get theirs done before ours and get approved. And that don't mean that two would be approved. Well, that's all right. Yeah, we're, we're in public <coughs> meetings. So, uh, but, but anyway, th this is, this is a, to me, a step in the right direction as far as what we need for the future sewage needs of the county. So, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor of this letter say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Unanimous. Motion passes. We'll get that done. Uh, number seven, office space for the. Uh, I was at the uh, uh, levy meeting last Monday night and they needed. <laughs> They're in love with the uh, the area up above Daniel's office, up those stairs. And the reason they are is they have all kinds of information, boxes, maps. They wanted a place. They, they asked me to come up with a place if we had it. A place they could lay their stuff out, lock the door, and leave. And then when they get time, go back and work through it and all. Are they going to pay rent? This is right now. All this is over. We got a forty-four thousand dollars container to pay for, Scott. Hey, it's everywhere. They said they said the other night. What they what they need to do is they need to consolidate it. They need to digitalize some of it. They got maps. They got some stuff they got to keep. They got some stuff they can discard. And and I suggested that you know y'all could do it in here, but no. Because we'll have to get all of it out and then have to get it all up. And if we had a place where we could leave it out. And then they said, since the White Martin worked on our furnace upstairs, he said, that worked great. And I said, there's some junk in there. I said, we can get the junk out. He said, if y'all get the junk out, you know how to do nothing else. Well, I want to help everybody out. But we are looking at bids for storage. We're giving the story. Is there any possibility of us to go out here? Is basically. I've been up there. You can put a camera in there and some of the county guys can carry stuff but up there. But the stairs are not. Well, that's another right thing. This being a public <laughs> entity, it's not ADA required. No. That steps on it. So, All right. that's so a legal issue. Use it and they call and what's the liability there? Well, they, they it's have. a different liability. Well, they have. an employee but, walking up the stairs. But they, they have. That's going to be 44000 for me. Thank you. They have their own, as far as I know, they would have their own oh, what about insurance. The What's that? What about the slaps? Are you going to check on every month? I don't know. No, I probably ain't. <laughs> I know I'm not. I mean, I probably aren't. Well, I, mean, I, 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 I kind of said they will and nilly, but I did. There, there's a little bit on there too. That like, we we just sat here and had a discussion with Lynn's issue about how we ain't got enough space to store stuff. We want to take any space that we do have but potentially that we may need as the county and tie it up with something else. Well, how, how many of you all have walked up those stairs and been up there? I, I used it to is. be up there when it was made. You just don't want to store anything up there that's of any value. Well, well, then why so, do they want it then? Well, just, you know, I just, I told them I'd ask. I told them I'd ask. If there's any, if there's any well, well, I'm not against it, I'm just discussing. I don't want to put a vacuum in the city. I don't know. This isn't How long they want to talk? My only issue with it is this is my prayer. This is that's that's more of a city thing versus a county thing. I'm only helps to benefit some some things we got inside here. That's that's flood wall does not benefit our constituents. Yeah. It does. Dang. It does. Well, some it of does. them. Dang. And it does our courthouse, and it does our our all of our offices are within the flood area. So we have a flood. Well, all I'm saying it's not just going to cost the city money. Have they asked you? I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to uh, speculate that they have it. 
But they oh, asked, why they asked me else first. I, I, I offered. I thought it was a. I thought it was good for us to take the leadership role of however how we can help agencies in the community. Oh, I, I didn't, but that's all right. <laughs> hey, he's I'll, 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 I'll make a I'll motion look. that we uh, allow the flood uh, levy commission to use that storage space for the maintenance homes. I think I should say on there about a month ago. They made a motion. You're going to put a time frame on it? I'll second it. Uh, Would you like to put a time frame until this is you know, I'll say until the time when the we county vote. might decide that they need until to. Until we tell them to move out. Is that yes. good? Until we ask them to yes. dedicate. Is the second they're good with putting that language is, they can use it until we ask them to vacate if necessary. The second they're good, how do we yeah, you say yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I, yes, I do have one thing to say. You know, when's the last time that room has been utilized for something? There's a calendar on the wall, but I don't remember. I remember, the remember dates. being up there when I was in business, bidding to put a roof on that building or something, and I walked in there and I thought, "Wow, this is part, part of the roof." On, what you know? So it's has been used for you think so? Move out, let them utilize. We should be ashamed of you. I'm going to go on and carry some of the steps. Well, that's, that's it, it tickled them to death. Carry it tickled them to death. So, all right, all right. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I the, I'm, I'm okay. What's going on? I, I don't like the open in this for the time frame. Well, we're telling them, we'll tell them to move out. The county decides to put something to move out. Yeah. Now, you, you can send the, the motion. Oh, I don't like put a date if you like. I want to make it December 31st. If they can't sort it out between now and the end of the year. Okay. I think they want to use it as long as we want. Well, I don't, I don't think it's forever. Until they get their stuff put together. I didn't take it as open-ended forever, by all means. Because I'm going to vote to tear it down <laughs> and, and build a judicial center there when that comes about. Well, I mean, That's I just, what I'm supporting. I know how these things go, you know. More. But they get that sorted right. out, then they got something else they want to put up there, something else they want to go through. It, it's not being utilized for anything anyway. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it puts in the motion that when we ask to move out, they move out. Well, what's the chance of us fixing it up if we want to move out? Then we're going to fix it up. <laughs> all right, Jan's done like this whenever. So, all right, any other discussion? Uh, instead of a roll call vote, I'll just do a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Most passes. Good discussion. <laughs> That's EMS hire. Almost quit, Chris. We're just hire and have hey, We're about done. Is this the executive session plan? No. Oh. No, I don't have anything on executive session. Oh. Okay. Uh, Chef, three in there for new hire, one inside. EMTs are full time at fifteen dollars an hour. The other is a part time paramedic at eighteen twenty five, and a part time EMT at sixteen dollars an hour. Which one's the new one? I, that's off there, but that's the all I was going to do full time. There's two part time EMTs on there. The one that says Daryl Lewis, and one says Daryl Lewis. One says Bridget Shelburne, the other one says oh. Jessica Stone. And Daryl Lewis, and then Dusty Lyles is full time. Full time. That's what. Yeah, it's page 121. He did that. Yeah, the part time EMTs are at 16, full time at 15, and part time paramedic at 18, 25. So it is four. Four. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, these four. We've got all the drug test back and start. And the fire requirements. To, to approve the uh, uh, approval of these four that we've mentioned, uh, pending the background and hiring requirements. Second. I have a motion by myself, second by Zach, to hire these four as listed, with the prices listed. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. I think I failed to say motion by me and second by Zach. And just so the court knows, we still have one full time position. Uh, we're still advertising for that. We had one had two people put in for full time and one did show up the interview. So. Good. There you go. All right, uh, next on the agenda is invoices, bills, and transfers. Any questions on any of those? Uh, 
Corey, uh, well, me and you was talking about that Corey always likes, and I think Cheryl likes, when I point out what the jail bill costs us. We were looking at the jail bills, and uh, they're actually down this month versus uh, a bit ago. But uh, anyway, Doug gave me some explanations on, on that jail money. But uh, do y'all have anything in particular you'd like to point out? Yeah, we got uh, we got some checks in on the county road probate stuff, didn't we? Almost a million dollars there, nine hundred and nine hundred thousand. I know we got some flex funds and stuff checks. <laughs> well, we got our second county road aid payment. We also got a partial reimbursement on some of the flex that we have done. And again, in 30 days, I expect Mago to be asking where they're going to start black top. When were you going to do that contract? You know, that was began in the year last year, wasn't it? Somehow? I don't remember when we did that. It's like they're about budget. Or did we do it before the June 30th? No, or do I put that about when we did it? I don't remember. I was asking. Well, it's fiscal year. It's fiscal year. I remember. Yeah, the agreement. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right. Uh, any other questions on any of the bills? Motion to pay the bills and make the transfer. Second. All right. Have a motion by Zach, seconded by Mike, to approve the invoices, bills, and transfers. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Uh, anyone have anything else come before this meeting? I may make note of the fact where you were questioning on the road fund money. Two hundred sixty-nine thousand was brought in for our last part of the portion of the county road aid that we'll get this year. One hundred forty-seven thousand of that was still uh, flex money that we spent earlier, and we still got more flex for to do to get in reimbursed on. So How much we got coming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember how much it was total to approve for the flex funds. I mean, what what we what we budgeted to do with flex funds last year? Did we even get half of them blocked off? I know we did a few long rows there. I don't think we got half of them. I think we got half of them. I think it was only about three to three or four. Got well, there's a few more on that. I mean, they Road, Kendall. Well, we need to discuss yeah, one earlier. They have one. They've done over at Dan's. They did. Uh, Hillsboro. Uh, Mike Brown. Mike Brown. They've done Mike Brown. Mm -hmm. they, well, there, there's a little. There's, there's a, there's a, a uh, little courtyard. River Heights. They've done. Well, he said we only got three, and I know more. That's why. <laughs> there was four. That's three. Did you get a quote for the ambush repair getting the packet? Sent last week. Let's see. Which one? The ambush credit's got the. Uh, oh, oh, no. But we can we can discuss that. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we've got a truck that's over in the oh. like building. The ambush, sorry. We've got that an ambulance tore up. Broke it's uh, not the, the tore up, it's broke. It's got a death wobble in the front end. It's got the heat and the air went out in the rear end. The total for the repair for everything, I can read you what I'm going to do. Four thousand nineteen dollars and ninety four cent. Uh, that is, uh, he has to replace some valves and the heat stuff and all the HVAC hoses under the truck and the pump, uh, and he'll reinstall that. He's got to reflash the computers. It's got some sensor out in the def system that's causing it to burn the def really hot or something. And then it needs a steering dampener, a drag link. And he's going to mount and balance new tires and realign everything on the front. On the front, the tires on the front with ball joints and tie rod ends. All this for four thousand. Mm -hmm. That's a good deal. Motion to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. I right, have a motion by Zach, second by Mike, to approve the four thousand nineteen and the change is four thousand nineteen dollars and ninety four cents to repair which ambulance? <laughs> Med three twenty twenty eighteen. May 3, 2018. And this is at what repair because Lee will need it for so the next. It's an emergency repair ink in Smithfield. Is that the guy that always works on the answers? The one that we've just found. Well, we just found a floor. Yeah. Right. He did the floor. The floor is really good. He did a great job. 
That's a good deal on, on front end. If you don't mind, look at Lynn and tell her that company again. Lynn, that's that way we'll have it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can we don't <coughs> no, I thought you were a motion repair ink. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Mike, to approve the current of the ambulance. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Chris, for bringing that up. Judge, we will be a good session. No, I don't have any executive okay. session unless Corey does. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We got a motion by Zach, second by Dan to adjourn. Neither debatable nor amendable. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Y'all don't seem to understand that about the levy. The part of the county is inside the levy, too. Yeah, we got, we got that covered. That's that's Dan's people. Okay. Well, it's all of our people, but it's in Dan's people.